I'm here today for an important reason. This country, the people of Suriname, have made a decision back in May. They made a decision that they too wanted democracy, that they wanted the rule of law, that they wanted a principal leader in Suriname. And the United States wants to support that wherever we can. And so I came here today to, to try to identify places where we can work together to support Suriname and the Surinamese people to make their lives better. Uh, we count on Suriname to help in the region as well, to be a beacon for hope, a beacon for opportunity. This is a country with an enormous opportunity for the creation of prosperity and for wealth for its own people and for the region. And so we want to come alongside where there's needed assistance for security, we're happy to provide it. Where there's needed assistance to use multilateral institutions to help finance needs here in the region, we're happy to do what we can to support that. We want good things for the people of this country. And that's why I came here today to congratulate uh, the new president and the new leadership and to find ways that we can work together to make life better for the people here in Suriname and life better for the people in the United States as a result of our work together. I'm convinced that the bilateral cooperation in various fields such as trade and investment, combating transnational organized crime, health, military, investments, defense, and justice and police as well will strengthen the political dialogue and will add to a strengthened relationship. In the coming days and weeks, designated teams of our two ministries of foreign affairs will be working on fleshing out those proposals further. This is an exciting time for potential economic growth in Suriname. The United States is eager to partner to ensure that it's sustainable that it benefits all people and brings our nations closer together. And we know too that the private sector is the best engine of economic growth. Nothing beats free enterprise for making lives better for people all across the world. That holds true for Suriname. No state-owned operation can beat the quality of the products and services of American private companies. They operate with the highest standards of accountability and transparency. All they ask for is a level playing field and clear rules of the road. And the president and I discussed that today. I'll be meeting just a little bit after this gathering with US business leaders to discuss how the Trump administration can help them thrive in Suriname and the region. Uh, Mr. President, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you if you think that there is a competition between the United States and China here in Suriname and more broadly in the region. Uh, did Secretary Pompeo make a convincing case to choose American companies as you go forward with your economic development? Uh, and do you feel that there is a choice that you have to make between the two countries, the United States and China? Thanks very much. Mr. President, may I answer yeah, okay. the first question yes, first? Okay. Yeah, great we spoke to the president about was making sure that there was transparency and the rule of law and fair opportunities and that there was no corruption. We're convinced that when that happens, the, the Western model, the non-authoritarian model, the model of democracy and human rights, the very things the president spoke about, will have enormous success, that it will be better for the people of Suriname. Uh, we've watched the Chinese Communist Party invest in countries, and it all seems great at the front end, and then it all comes falling down when the political costs connected to that becomes clear. And we do our level best wherever I travel to make, uh, to make the case for just making sure everybody understands what they're getting into. Uh, we, have, we brook no, uh, no ill will towards true Chinese competition. If a Chinese company shows up and competes on a fair and equitable basis, and they're the provider that provides the best value, that's the, that's the company that the government ought to choose. That certainly holds here in Suriname as well. But we've observed the Chinese Communist Party for these past years under General Secretary Xi. That's not the case very often. They often show up in ways that are inconsistent with the value set that I've heard the president speak about, the things that are best for the people of Suriname. And so what we want is open, transparent processes 
Uh, we want good value for the people of Suriname. We want jobs for the people of Suriname. We want companies that come here to obey environmental rules in the way that American companies will do when they show up. Uh, we honor contracts. We have expectations that host nations honor contracts. We, we don't engage in crony capitalism. We don't engage in predatory economic activity. Our businesses come here to create value and jobs for the country in which they put foreign direct investment. We want America to show up with enormous amount of foreign direct investment. The foreign minister and I have spoken about this. Uh, we want to show up, come here, compete, and make lives better for Sur Suriname's businesses and for its people. That's, that's what we spoke about today, and I am confident that we'll have real opportunities to do that in the months ahead. As regards uh, the position of uh, China uh, and this uh, relation, I can uh, inform you clearly that this was not a topic of the agenda. It was not a topic for discussion. So it is not a question of making choices. Today's visit with the Secretary of State, Mr. Mike Pompeo, with his visit, we have made clearly that we'll enter a new stage of uh, strengthening the cooperation in several areas of cooperation where the topics were discussed clearly and commitments were made. And sure, we have uh, also good cooperation with so many other countries. Thank you.